Hi YouTubers, Maggie Mae here again. Just like to tell you, we start by telling you this is three years today from my dad passed away. I think I, I said that to, to you in another video. So uh, I goes to my mother's today, as I, as I do every day. Every day I visit my mother. It doesn't matter whether I'm a bit of the flu, I'll always visit. We just know done. Anyway, we goes in today and she says to me, any chance you can take me a wee run down to the cemetery? So I said, yes. I mean, the, the house was for a family the day because everybody had been doing in, in laid flowers. So I said to her, yeah, I'll take you down, Mum. That's fine. So she went and got her jacket on. Although she didn't need it, it's nice and warm, but my mother's always cold. I don't know why, but she's always cold. Anyway, off we go down to the cemetery. It's only about a mile away. And we're driving up into the cemetery and we're having a wee talk about my dad and things like that. And just as we went in the third opening to where my dad is actually laying, my CD player jumped on. Whether I went over a bump or not, I don't, I don't know, but the CD came on. And it was number seven that was playing. And it was something about, as you lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep and whatever the, so the song goes on. What I should have done before I'd done this wee, wee, mo wee clip was, I should have found out the name of the song. Anyway, it started playing this sort of miserable old song. But my dad liked miserable old music. But of course, my sister's in the back of the car. Put that off, put that off, that'll make me cry. Please put it off. So I put it off. But the point I'm trying to make is, I don't know how... It came on, and it came on at number seven. I mean, it, it just, my mother said herself, she says, I'm very, I'm shocked that that happened. I says, well, I can swear to God. My hands were nowhere near putting the CD on, because it was quiet all the way down. Anyway, that's what happened today. So I think my dad was just letting us know that he was happy that I had taken mum down. And I hope that that's what it was anyway. I fully expected him to appear to me in his, my dreams last night, but he didn't. So I'm hoping the night that he may appear and just, you know, tell me everything's okay, as he did after he died. And this, this is quite strange. The night my dad died, I don't tell many people this, but the night he died, we knew that he was that he was basically in the road out and it was just a matter of waiting on a phone call. So I'm in my bed and Eamon was watching a movie in the living room and I heard the phone ringing and I opened my eyes like that. And I looked at the clock, it was eight minutes to twelve. So of course I heard Eamon shouting, Margaret, it's your mum. And I knew, I knew instantly. So I came through, took the phone, hi mum. Your dad's away, Margaret. That's him going. He's that's him away. Of course, I was a bit upset and that, but I, I knew I says, well, it's maybe for the best, Mum, because I think nearer the end. Although I knew he was hanging on for our sake, more so than for himself. Anyway, that was him going eight minutes to twelve. So he died about quarter to twelve. Anyway, that was fine. But the point was I tried to make tea there was, as I was laying in my bed and I heard the phone ring and I woke up and I had st felt sticky stuff round about my mouth, well round about the side and and I did this with my hands, as you would do, Ken, I thought my bedroom slam or something. Anyway, I did this with my hands but there was nothing there and I thought, that's strange. Anyway, I often wonder if that was Dad giving me a wee kiss before he left. And I like to think he did. So that's just one of my own wee memories that um, I just hope he come and said goodbye before he went. And there's no a day goes by, but I don't miss it all, Codger. And he used to scare me with stories when, when I was a wee lassie. You know, I would wait for Dad coming home for his work in the winter and... Then I'd get into bed and he'd come through and it'd be me and Johnny and maybe my sister Diana, she, although she was a wee bit older than me, but we there would go on. He would bring us a box of Smarties. And do you know, in the, in the days, when he opened the box of Smarties and poured them on to the bed, onto the quilt, 
and you would see, look at all the colours, Wayne's like, we'll share them out sort of thing. So we we would share them out as best we could. But that wee, that wee memory, it was always, Dad, you can tell us a scary story in the night, and he would always tell us, and they would tell us normal stories as well. He used to make up wee stories for us about just different, different things, just like fairy tales sort of thing. But it was his it was his scary stories I liked and you know in in the hallway in the hallway in Broome now, the house we were in in Broome now, had a long hall. Well it was long when I was a wee lassie, probably now looking at it just the same as this hall. But inside we had a bit that kinda hung down in the centre to maybe about six feet, because the ceilings were high. Well my dad put big bolts up there and he put a swing in the hall for us so as we could swing in the winter and whatever so we loved this swing but just above the swing there was a picture that my mother had picked up at a jumble sale that we had been at and it was just a picture of an old man's face with a sort of dark brown background but it was it was a uh, oil paint and it was signed so anyway excuse me we hung this picture up here and Dad would say to us, oh, you watch, he's watching you if you go out your bed at night, Tim. Um, and we, we were quite scared of this this paint, and although my dad didn't do no any malice behind it to, to really threaten us or anything, but anyway, we were feared to this painting. But then one day there was a chap at the door, and it was an Irishman, and he was buying things that you had in the house that you maybe no longer wanted. Now, when he saw this painting hanging in my mother's hall, of course, it was what he wanted, was this painting. And my mother says, well, I don't know. My husband likes a painting. He's at his work. I don't know. Oh, go on, missus. Go on, missus. I'll give you a pound. I'll give you a pound. Well, a pound in the 60s was a good bit of money. So my mother jumped to the chance and gave him it, and away he went to the, to the painting. And, you know, my dad came home, and he was so angry. No, no, he was angry at my mum selling it, but he was more angry that he felt my mum had been ripped off because he says, if this guy was really desperate to buy it, you should have, you should have told him to come back when I was here. But anyway, mum got rid of this picture because us kids were fit to it. My dad had made us fit to it. But that wee story just come to mind there. But um, she only got the pound, and God knows what picture it was or whose artist it was or that you don't know you do these silly things when you're when you're here i also used to remember this is nothing to do with ghosts and you're probably bored listening to me but when we were kids we used to hear a trumpet being blown and it was the ragman and it was just a man a stranger basically and he would have a trumpet and he would blow the trumpet and you took rags out your house, old clothes that your mother gave you, and you took them out to this van, and the man would have a look at them, throw them in the back of the van, and then he would give you a toy. Now, see, looking back on that, that would not happen now. The rag, oh, here's the, the ragman. And, you know, oh, my monkey's rags, an old jacket, wouldn't it? Oh. Well, he used to give out wee toys, and one of the wee toys in particular was a wee camera. And when you looked through the camera and clicked it, a different photo, a horse or a dog or something came up. And I always loved, you only come maybe once a year to Broome now. And I just would like to ask if there's anybody out there that remembers the Ragman. And as I say, we would all go out to him. But think, looking back now, I mean, it was, anything could have happened to the, to the kids. Anything at all. Luckily it didn't. It didn't, but anything could have happened. I certainly would never have let my kids go out with, with rags for the rag man. But the days were innocent. That's My dad always said that. The years were innocent. And and he's right. I didn't know what he meant at the time, but he was right. The days, it was, the world was a better place as well. Cleaner. You could go around into the square when it was the gala week in Dalmellington. You would go around into the square. And, you know, I don't remember seeing rubbish line. I mean, ah, you would maybe get the old chip bag or something like that. Or, 
but you never saw cans, bottles, bin bags, carrier bags, sweetie wrappings. You never seen nothing like that. And again, if we did have some rubbish or man to pick, we'd have a hanky or something. She'd bin it. She'd take it home and bin it. But no, 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 no. You just, uh, it's, it's a shame. Youngsters nowadays, they don't really have any respect or anything for for anybody come to that. No, never mind just your elders. I mean, I was brought up, I wouldn't have said boo to a goose. And nor would I uh, call my neighbours by the first name. It was always Mr. Mrs. Always. Um, but, but nowadays you hear kids as young as six and seven shouting a nickname at a man. You, you know, just shouting, ha, ha, ha. You know, and I mean, that didn't happen when I was a wee girl, didn't happen. I had a brilliant upbringing. But anyway, I think I've spoken enough now, uh, about Broome now, and all the friends I had down there. I must document all these stories I have uh, of Broome now, of what went on down there and what didn't go on. We, we live next door to Delmellington. It's an old hospital, we called it. It's now the, the cadets are in there. But we lived right next next to it, and my dad says it was used during the war as a hospital. So it just got the nickname, the old horsey. And, you know, we stayed next door to it, and it's all the fun memories. All the nice memories. My dad had pigeons and everything. Anyway, I'm going to stop speaking now, and I'll speak to you soon. Okay, take care. Bye.